Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this Middle East Outlook session at the World Policy Conference in Abu Dhabi. I'm Terry Martin. I'm a Berlin-based broadcast journalist, and some of you may remember me from yesterday when I chaired the Ukraine session. Um, today, I'm jumping in for Stephen Erlanger. Stephen Erlanger, I understand, is a regular at this conference. Uh, he was originally scheduled to chair this session, but was called back to work. So my apologies to any of you who were expecting to see Stephen Erlanger up here. There's no way I can fill Steve's big shoes, but I, I assure you I will do my very best to make this panel worth your while. I'll introduce our distinguished guests in just a moment, but first I want to say, if this conference had been held one month ago, uh, we would be having a very different conversation than the one we're about to have right now. The attack by Hamas on Israel on October 7th and Israel's response have shattered the status quo and put a big question mark over the immediate future of this region. The repercussions, of course, have been global. It's being felt around the world. Over the next hour and a half, we'll explore uh, what has changed since October 7th so far and what hasn't changed, uh, what's at stake in the coming months, and how the conflict might shape the region moving forward. Now, we're not going to talk exclusively about the conflict, but there's a good chance that 98% of it will, uh, will be related to it. Now, understandably, public attention right now is focused very much on the suffer, on the profound suffering and risks inherent in this war, but uh, I will encourage our panel to explore, uh, to also reflect on the possibility for exploring a viable solution to the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, because obviously such a solution uh, can be regarded as essential to the future of peace and stability uh, in the region. Now, we do have a great panel on this topic. I'm going to just quickly introduce them now, uh, starting from my left. Uh, Mohammed Baharun, I hope I got that right, is director and co-founder of the Dubai Policy uh, Public Policy Research Center. Before that, he was editor of the Gulf Defense magazine and worked for multiple media outlets, so a colleague in that sense. He played a key role in the United Arab Emirates National Identity Initiative, I understand, and he's a founding board member of the of Busola, the Busola Institute, uh, which is a Brussels-based think tank focusing on the ties between the EU and the Gulf Cooperation Council states. So, yeah. Nabil Fahmi, next to him, uh, and I'm sure that uh, I understand that you've been here also a time or two yourself, uh, is Dean Emeritus at the American University in Cairo, where he founded the School of Global Affairs. Uh, he's also a career diplomat. He was Egypt's Minister of Foreign Affairs and uh, also Ambassador to the United States and, and Japan before that. He also worked extensively with the United Nations on disarmament and international security. Renaud Gérard is senior reporter and international columnist at the French daily Le Figaro. He covered global political crises and armed conflicts for 40 years. Uh, he's a journalist, uh, also a colleague in that sense, but uh, you know, very accomplished, much more accomplished than I am. He's written several books on the Middle East and uh, diplomatic issues, so he's well versed in these topics. Volker Pertes, someone I've known for quite a while in Germany uh, when he was head of Stiftung Wissenschaft and Politik, that's uh, international, the Institute for International and Security Affairs, SWP, some of you may know. Uh, he is currently Under Secretary General and head of the strategic review team of the United Nations Assistance Mission in Iraq. He formerly served as Special Representative of the Secretary General uh, for Sudan and head of the UN's transition assistance mission in Sudan. He was also UN Assistant Secretary General and Senior Advisor to the UN Special Envoy for Syria and was previously Director, of, the, as I mentioned, of SWP. So we've got someone very uh, with intimate knowledge of a couple of the signatories of the Abraham Accords as well. Itamar Rabinovich uh, was supposed to be, be joining us. He couldn't 
travel here. He's going to still try, they we're trying to reach him right now. He was planning to visit us remotely. Uh, we're hoping that he'll be here. Uh, he's Professor Emeritus of Middle Eastern History at Tel Aviv University uh, and President Emeritus and Counselor of the Israel Institute with offices in Washington and Tel Aviv, uh, Distinguished Fellow of the Brookings Institution, and so on. He served as Ambassador of, of Israel to the United States and Chief Negotiator with Syria in the mid-1990s. That, that experience would be very valuable to have with us today. I'm hoping that we will still be able to contact him remotely. I'll, I'll keep you up to date on that. And at the other end of our, our large stage here, we have Dorothee Schmidt. She is head of the Turkey Middle East program at the French Institute of International uh, Relations, IFRI, which is behind this. Uh, her work is focused on European policies in the Mediterranean and the Middle East, on the dynamics in these regions, and on the Arab policy of France. She's done extensive work tracking the emergence of Turkey as a global power. So, thank you to all of our panelists for being with us today. It's an amazing group of speakers that I think are going to be able to pro, uh, give us some real insights on, on where we are and where things might be headed. We'll start with each of our speakers delivering some opening remarks. Uh, remarks will be delivered partly uh, in, in English, mainly in English, partly in French. Uh, so if you need some headphones, please, please get them now. Uh, I will then get the discussion going along the way. I plan to integrate some input from, from the floor, from all of you. So during the last third of the, of the session, we're going to try to, I'll be calling on you for questions or if you just raise your hand when we get there. Mm -hmm.